Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in today and thank you for your support. Today I'll be talking about three different editions of what is considered to be The Grateful Dead's best studio album, and that's American Beauty. I have three editions here. Uh, one is the Rhino High Fidelity edition that just came out. Also I have the 2011 Chris Bellman cut, also on Rhino. <clears throat> and I also have um, the original Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab version cut by Stan Ricker. All of them are all analog, all of them are from the original master tapes, and all of them sound different. Don't let anyone fool you. Uh, they do sound different, and each will appeal to a different listener. So I'll try to explain the differences as best I can. Um, I don't have files for this uh, video. Um, there's something that takes some work to arrange because someone else does them for me. But going forward in the future, I am going to purchase my own digital recorder and make files where I feel it's appropriate for you to have um, a sound comparison as well as my description. So I think that's very valuable. Um, even though it's not perfect, it can give you an indication of what I'm describing and you can see if it correlates uh, with uh, what you're hearing on the file. So a very interesting development. I'm so excited to start implementing that as well. So let's talk about this. Uh, I love I love light hitting hitting this. <laughs> it's kind of warming it up. Looks nice. I mean, the rhino looks beautiful. I mean, really, these jackets can't be topped. If you're going by jacket quality, the rhino is the winner for sure. And many times, the masterings are too. I really like the Cars debut. I thought that was excellent. I, f I fell in love with the Van Morrison one. I thought that was great too. And then I started to get a little concerned. Starting with the Captain and me, uh, the Doobie Brothers, I started to feel like there was a little too much detail emphasis, top end emphasis on these records. When Candy L came around, I even felt more of that. And I described that in the Candy L video that I just released and end up, ended up preferring something else. Same with Captain and Me, I ended up preferring the speaker's corner. And so now we have this, um, and I think the trend is continuing. It's, it seems to be an intentional choice um, because I've tested my system, which has just been upgraded with new speakers and everything, and I still have my other speakers to refer back to and I've, you know, I tested it with my reference recordings. It sounds better than it ever has. So I don't think the system is uh, even in this equation. I think it's an intentional choice to appeal to people that uh, prefer high frequency detail and all that entails. And sometimes I feel like it's at the expense of overall musical uh, concerns. It's, it's a personal choice, but it's a trend that I noticed on these Rhino Hi-Fi releases that I don't hear on others. Um, Kevin Gray is someone that I, if you go back through my channel, you'll see that I'm often praising him, probably more than anyone else uh, in the mastering community. He's been mentioned hundreds of times on my channel. I love his jazz reissues. I love his mastering style. I love his new console or his new setup. Even going backwards, um, I'm currently working on a shootout for a very uh, classic Yes album, and I'm finding that his mastering of that album is really standing out to me as the best. So it's, it's not a question of I don't like Kevin Gray's mastering. It's just, I think, an intentional choice for this series to give it extra detail to make it stand out. And... To me, it's sometimes a little problematic. In the case of this album, where there's so much uh, beautiful ac acoustic music going on in comparison to like the cars, I feel like the vocals, the tops of the acoustic guitars all have a bit of an edge, you know, to give you that ultra clarity and detail that many people will love 
but for me, I, it kind of keeps me at bay. It doesn't invite me into the record. And that's how I felt with this. When I got to the other copies, it became even more evident. It has many wonderful qualities. Definitely detail, separation, and so forth are excellent. But the overall presentation is tipped up a little bit to the point where I don't enjoy it as much and I don't find it to be as musical as I would like. That became really apparent when I went on to this one. This is uh, Stan Recker's cut on the original Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab. Now they had their hits or misses. You know, actually looking at this, I love the darker wood look of this compared to that. Um, they had their hits or misses. They had smiley face DQ on some things, which who's the top and the bottom. But I think they got it right on this one. As soon as I put this one on, and it was right after the Rhino, I was like, my I could feel my body relax. Gone was that 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 detail that was pushing out and kind of flattening out things and keeping me back from from going into this performance. Here, it wasn't like that at all. All the detail was there but it was rendered in a way that was just more pleasant. It was like an inviting laid back groove. And you could turn this one up and not lose anything. When you turn up the Rhino, it sort of gets a little too aggressive. And I think Stan Ricker did a beautiful job on this one. It sounds like real musicians playing real instruments. The instruments sound very accurate, but never emphasized good separation and, and clarity. There's wonderful layering of instruments and a depth to it that is very attractive. It, it, it invites you in. And I love that about this. I really do. I feel like the, the third pressing here, which is um, Chris Bellman's Rhino edition, probably the most affordable edition of all of them, um, kind of, straddles the two. It has the warmth, the musicality of the Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab, but it gives you a bit more clarity and detail as well, but never to the level of the Rhino. The Rhino will appeal to people that treasure that kind of exploration into minute detail, extra clarity, and so forth. But I feel like they're sacrificing something. And I feel like over the long run um, that this will become a little fatiguing to listen to. Even in my short listening sessions with it, I felt that way. And I never felt that way with the MoFi, uh, Mo Fidelity, I'm sorry. Um, with the Mo Fidelity, I was able to just lay back and get into it and move along with it and just discover the beautiful arrangements and wonderful tonality of instruments, great depth and sound staging. And it felt like I was at a musical performance rather than looking at a very cleaned up picture of a musical performance. And I think that's the difference here. There's no right or wrong. Um, many people will prefer hearing all that detail. For me, it, it's just a personal thing, I guess. Um, I just don't like that and I never have. Um, and I've tailored my system to not accentuate that. And for the Rhino to stand out in that way means there is something going on there. Uh, and I thought it would, I thought it would be better actually, but um, they do not sound alike, not at all. Um, warm, medium, <laughs> and cool, I would say. Uh, that's how I see it. Let me know what you think in the comments. You know, even if you have an opposing view viewpoint, please post it because it's important to have this discussion and I love to discuss in the comments. As long as everything is civil, <laughs> it's good for me. So let me know what you think. Until next time, I'm Scott for the Pressing Matters. Have a great day.